What's good? Year 11 general mathematicianers, Mr. Herman here with another video and this will be looking at exercise 7c which is lesson 3, how to interpret a scatter plot. So by now you should be well aware of how a scatter plot works, how to create a scatter plot, how to construct one and how to interpret the information will be looked into for this exercise. So what features do we look for in a scatter plot to help us identify and describe any associations that are present? Um, we want to see, the very very first thing we want to see before you say association or link, the first thing we want to see is if there is a clear pattern between, um, between the variables when plotted onto a, uh, a graph. So example one here, for the four examples below, state if there is a clear pattern or not. This first one here, we can just see dots randomly put onto a plot. There's no link, there's no pattern, it's random. So in this case, you would say that there's no clear pattern. But then when you look into this one, you can actually see that there is a pattern. You can see that there's a trend with the, the, the scattering dots moving upwards from left to right. There's no uh, specific uniformity, but there is, there is some type of pattern that we can see here. Likewise, you can see a pattern here, even though it does have a trend to go up and then back down, you can clearly see that there is a pattern um, with these scatter plots here, with these points here. And then lastly, there is again a pattern here because you can see that there's a trend between the points but this time it's going downwards from left to right. So the, the first one there's no clear pattern but the, the next three there are clear patterns. So whenever there is a clear pattern that we can see within the set of points, we conclude that there is an association. And another word for association is either a relationship or one word you will definitely hear uh, quite a bit is correlation and correlation uh, if you break this word down co um, to uh, to have something as a co it just means to uh, work hand in hand with something and obviously a relation there's a link between two so correlation it's almost like a double meaning link link um, if there's no clear pattern in the points so the points are randomly uh, scattered across the plot like we saw in the first example uh, we can cl conclude that there is no association so when a clear pattern is found, we need to be able to describe the associations and there's different ways of describing the associations, okay? Um, and it can be quite a bit to take in because there's different uh, characteristics between scatter plots. Um, but we'll take it uh, one, one step or one chunk at a time. So there are four things we look for in a pattern of points. The first one is the direction. Um, and this is also known as polarity. We want to see if the direction is going from left to right upwards or from left to right downwards. We also want to see the form or the um, linearity. I always get that word um, terrible with it. Uh, strength and outliers is also the other two things that we look into. And outliers. Um, Outliers we saw in the previous topic, outliers, we're looking for a point that just seems to be way out of the <clears throat> expected range from the other data points, okay? Um, strength talks about how, um, how clustered are these points to each other, okay? Are they kind of spread out? You can sort of see a link, but the points are kind of spread out within the scatter. Or do they tend to really, really close to a straight line, other uh, positive or negative? Form or linearity is um, form just talks about whether it is a straight line that the clusters are making, or whether there's a curve of some sort, like we saw in this example here. Um, this is not linear at all; it's, it's an actual curve. Um, and that's all we talk about. Those are the four main things that you need to talk about whenever you see a scatter plot. If you can't identify four things, either um, you don't have enough information or you would say that there is no clear pattern of some sort. 
So a positive association, two variables have a positive association and the value of the response variable tends to increase as the value of the explanatory variable increases. So when the EV goes up, the RV also goes up. So a, a good example is if I spend time um, on an, ex an exam, the more time that I spend studying for that exam, the more likely I will get a higher grade. And we can see this as a trend and this will be a positive association. As one goes positive, the other will also go positive. A negative association is when two variables have a negative association when the value of the response variable decreases as the explanatory variable increases. So it's not when they both decrease um, because that ironically becomes positive association again. Um, negative association, one has to go up and the other one has to go down. And namely, the response variable will decrease as the explanatory variable increases. So in other words, like the other example that we saw in the previous lessons, when the price, um, or when the, the car, a second-hand car, as the age of that car increases, so that's the explanatory variable, the response variable, its price, will actually go down. In, in costs in dollars because it's getting older so it's not going to be worth as much. So when one goes up the other one will some go down and this is what we call a negative association. <clears throat> and when there's no association there's just random scatter plots. And two variables have no association when there is no consistent change. Okay and consistent means that throughout the whole thing there's no change. You might get a, um, a linear association and, a, and it's positive and all of a sudden it scatters off, okay? Um, if this is the case, you, you would still, still say there's somewhat of a positive association, but when there's no consistency, consistent change or no consistency within there, um, you would say it has no association. There's no mountain to trek, in other words. Now the form of the association, uh, this one's really easy. You can either have a linear association a uh, scatter plot is said to have a linear form when the plots tend to follow a straight line in this exhibit here, or when there's a non-linear association. So a scatter plot is said to have a non-linear form when it tends to follow a curved line. And this curve can either curve like this or curve in this example like that, which looks like exponential growth, or in the previous example where it can curve up and then go back down like a parabola, it's called a parabola or a negative parabola. Um, when there's a curve of some sort, it's nonlinear. Now the strength <clears throat> is broken down into three different types of strengths. Now you can obviously have many, many, many ver varying strengths of association, but it's good to just chunk them into three different parts. And we chunk them into strong, moderate, and weak. So when there's strong association, um, the points will tend to follow a single stream, regardless of whether it is linear or non-linear. If you have a, an imaginary line or a line of best fit, the closer these points are or the scatter is to that uh, line of best fit that you've created, the stronger the association, okay? Um, so you can have a strong positive, you can have another strong positive that's um, non-linear, or you can have a strong negative. The key word we're looking here is the strength and all of these examples are strong. Moderate is when you can still see that trend happening. You can still see an association, but it's not as strong as the previous one. So you can still see here, there is a linearity going from left to right here. Same with this, it's still curved. Same with this, this is negative. But you would say that the association is moderate. It's less clear to see the link between the two. And the last one, there's a weak association. Now weak, it's easy to get weak and no scatter plots, um, if this is the case. Uh, but weak positive association, um, you can say there's some form of a link between the two. But it's, it's very, very tricky to see. In fact, if you add another point here and maybe there, you could say that it's safe to say that there's no association whatsoever. Um, so the strength can either be strong, moderate, or weak. And then obviously there's no association if the scatter plots just look like this. And then lastly, what I was saying before, outlines, identify and investigate 
any outliers. Outliers are one of the things where you just have to look for within a scatter plot. There's no obvious maths behind it. If a point just seems really out of place, and there could be more than one, or points, in this case, you would say that it is an outlier. All right, let's, look at, uh, let's have a look at these four different examples that we have here. And we're gonna look at the associations for the scatter plots, and we're gonna decide if there is a relationship. Um, I'm gonna comment on the direction, form, strength, and if possible, any outliers that exist within there. So the first one here, we're looking at the fitness level of certain people and the amount of cigarettes they smoked. Obviously, the more cigarettes that people smoke, and I'm assuming throughout the week or day, um, doesn't matter on the context, we know that the more cigarettes that they smoke, the lower the fitness level. Meaning that from left to right, this is going down, as one increases the EV, the RV decreases, it goes down. And of course, if you smoke cigarettes, your fitness level is gonna go down. So in this case, we can say that the association with this, that the direction here is negative. There is a negative, a negative, and we can also say that the chunks or the scatter tends to cluster very close to an imaginary line of best fit. And because they cluster very close, we would say it would have a strong association. So there's a negative, strong. Now, uh, a lot of students back in the day, back in the previous years I've done this, would argue that this type of association tends to be linear because of this little point here. And they see that it kind of goes out and then curves a little bit and then goes down. While this might seem like the case, this is actually linear. And the reason why I believe this is linear is because we can fit our line of best fit within here and none of these points are going to seem out of place. If this trend, this kind of sh straight looking trend were to have also um, be exposed around here and it was like this then dipped down, then yes you could say that it was non-linear. But in this case, I believe it's a linear association. Uh, so we have a, no a negative strong uh, linear association and we also say that um, there are no outliers present so with no outliers present now spoiler alert none of them have outliers present so in this case uh, we can just talk about <clears throat> the negative strong linear association okay second one we have the weekly hours of study versus the mark at a school as a percentage. So, as your weekly hours of study increases, the marks at school as a percentage, I'm assuming as an average, will also increase. This is a quite simple one because we know that there is a linear association. We know it's positive. It's going up from left to, a left to right. So there's positive and there is a strong association because it does cluster towards a, a line if you were to put this line in. There's a positive, strong, <clears throat> and again, linear, linear association. Beautiful. Again, no outliers present. Last two. Hours spent using a computer per week, hours spent cooking per week. Now just looking at the context in itself, Mm, it's safe to say that I don't think there will be any correlation between the two. There's a possibility that there could be. Um, you know, you're either going to spend more hours cooking as opposed to spending hours spent on a computer, but I'm spending hours on the computer because of remote learning and I do most of the cooking, if not all the cooking at home. I don't see a link. No association. It has this delayed. Ah, oh, yep. I knew there was gonna. My brain saw there was no A there, so it just decided to put another A there. No association. Okay, last one. This one here. Your age versus t 
time under water. I'm assuming time under water holding your breath. It's random time under water. Is, is your head dunk under water? Well, I don't know. We don't know the context. But we do know that there is a strong and also a positive because it's going up from left to right. Left to right. There is a strong positive. In this case, this is where that taper off happens around here and it will I assume keep going straight. It could go uh, and then increase again, which I highly doubt. Uh, or it could go down, possibly, we don't know. But we do say it is non-linear. It's a non-linear association. Again, no allies, really. And that's all there is to it. That's all you need to do. You just as, many, as long as you, if there is association of some sort, list off those four different criterias. Um, if you talk about them within your explanation, you'll be fine. And that concludes lesson three, 70. Check your log sheet. You know what you do. Catch you in the next video. Bye.